All right, all right. Shalom, shalom, Akim. First and foremost, we want to start by giving all praise and honor and glory unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do rule well, teach well. Okay, peace and salutations to the Akim out there doing the work of truth and in sincerity to you all. I say shalom. And today's lesson is going to be in regards to a new heaven and a new earth. And uh, this is what we're fighting for. We're fighting for righteousness being predominant, right? Dominant upon the planet Earth and throughout the whole universe. Esau Edom has been ruling for a while now. He's been ruling in wickedness. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Job 9, 24 says that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So as we see it, we see the earth is being destroyed by Esau Edom, man. Okay. And, you know, he, he comes out with all these different unrighteous decrees. All these different things, things to try to suppress the people, starting with Jacob. You know, the nation of Israel. Okay, we are Esau Edom's number one enemy. And, and his hope is that we don't come back to our nationality. We don't come back to our true identity, our true inheritance, man. And he's doing everything within his power to keep us from our power. Okay, who is Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai? But Yahweh Shai, man, before he left, he said, man, look, these are the things that you're going to inherit. You, if you lost these things for me, if you if you sacrifice these things for me on this side, you're going to receive a hundredfold. And, you know, first and foremost, man, we're looking forward to the kingdom of heaven, man, a kingdom of righteousness. Okay? And the earth being renewed. Okay? Being refreshed. So I wanted to start with the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. It says, but the day of the Lord, the day of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, will come as a thief in the night, right? Because Yahweh Shai is going to be the one that cracks those clouds, man. He's waiting on the Father Yahweh to give him that go ahead. And once he gets that go ahead from the Father, man, it is on and popping. Okay? His eye is not going to spare any. He's not going to be, you know, uh, 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 sitting there trying to, you know, convince you. No, it's. The only thing that's going to happen when Yahweh Shai cracks those clouds is going to be straight judgment. Okay? It says, in the, in, the, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements, right? It's talking about rocks. It's talking about water. Okay? It's talking about air. All these things are going to dissolve. It says what? They shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, what is hot enough to dissolve elements? Well, let's take a look at this. Okay. It says temperature of a nuclear explosion reach those in the interior of the sun about a hundred million degrees Celsius probably more and produce a brilliant fireball so imagine man the scripture talks about uh, 200,000 uh, 200, thousand arrows being shot here in the land of the north and in the land of the north represents America roughly paraphrasing that's a representation of missiles being launched from these different adversaries of Babylon, a.k.a. America. And as we see it, as it stands now, you have what is called the BRICS nations. You have Russia, India, China, Turkey, Iran, and a couple other nations who are gathering and mustering themselves together to eventually come against Babylon and her allies. But when you read the book of Obadiah, it says the, that, that the allies, they have laid a wound upon them, man. So pretty soon, Esau, Edom's friends, his, his so-called allies are going to turn against him too. But not to veer off, man. This, this is in regards to a new heaven and a new earth. And what better way to bring in a new heaven and a new earth than to destroy the old, to burn up all the things that were in it that had no purpose, that was wicked. Everything in this world is going to be turned upside down, man. The scripture says that the earth is going to rock to and fro like a drunken. Because of the amount of missiles that are going to be launched on this place. Can you believe that? 
This is Isaiah 24 and 20. It says, The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Right? Why? Because it says in verse 19, when you read up, it says, The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Right? In order to clean dissolve something, you have to bring in fire or water. But water was already used to refresh the earth during the time of Noah. But the Lord said he's not going to destroy the earth by water anymore. So guess what's left? Fire. Fire is the thing that's left <laughs> to bring about the kingdom of heaven, man. You have, to, you have to clear out the old in order to bring in the new. Scripture says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Okay, Ecclesiastes 7 and 8, it says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Right. And we are patiently waiting for Yahweh Bashmi Shai to set us up, to return to us our integrity, to return us to the form that we once held when we were with Yahweh Shai in the beginning. You see? And this is why they call the Bible the gospel, the good news, man. Because the good news is that even though we are the meek of the earth now, we are going to be glorified through Yahweh Shai when we get into the kingdom. But in order for that to happen, the old rulership, the old government, the old way of living has to be clean dissolved, man. So much so that the elements are going to burn with fervent heat. That's an amazing thing. You see? And there's other scriptures to back that up too. Let me see. Uh, we can go into the book of Joel too. But I know it's lengthy, and I didn't want to make this too lengthy, but once again, the whole point, we have to prove the point. That's the whole purpose of, you know, teaching, proving the point. So this is Joel 2 and 1. It says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Right. So we as a prophets, we're going out there and we are warning the people, the nation of Israel, about what the Lord is going to do. Yahweh Yahweh Shai says, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and not gloom and, and of gloominess, Salaki. A day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath never been, there hath never, or there hath not been ever like the like. Neither shall there any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. And what does that remind you of? A missile. You, if you're sitting on top of a missile, and you're looking ahead. Everything before that missile hits is beautiful. The earth is beautiful. Even though Esau is destroying the majority of it. Yes, you still have certain parts of the earth that is beautiful. But imagine you're sitting on a missile and you're seeing this missile is about to hit this beautiful place. Yeah, it's like a garden. But what does it say afterwards? It says, and, and behind them, a flame burneth, right? A flame representing what? The, the, the exhaust, the flame that's, that's, that's pushing that missile or that projectile. The land is as a garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolation or a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. That's talking about a missile. How once before that missile hits that place before it hits is like the garden of Eden, right? But once that missile hits that place, it's going to be desolate. And this is the, 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 how you say this is um, the pronouncement or the judgment of Babylon desolation once again where Babylon represents America we are prophesying the downfall of a wicked nation where man can be with a man woman with woman you know grown ass men with little children abominations the worshipping of false idols you know there is <laughs> There's no power outside of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But yet the people still worship the makings of their own hand, the ideas and doctrines that come out their own. Listen, the Lord is coming to destroy all that shit. The only thing that's going to have dominance on the planet Earth and throughout the universe is the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But he's going to destroy this place with the fervent heat, which is going to come from a thermonuclear missile, man. Okay? But that has to happen once again in order to bring in a new kingdom. You got to get rid of the old management. And the Lord is coming for the proud, man. Starting with the elite. 
Okay? Yeah, you're going to have some of the nations, the, 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 the people of the nations, they're going to be destroyed. But Esau, Edom is going to, especially the elite, they're going to be preserved, preserved for, 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 uh, for you know, slavery. <laughs> they're going to be the ones to build up the nation of Israel. And we're going to be putting our foot in their ass for a thousand years, man. During our rulership with Yahweh Shai. Joel 1 and 15 says, Alas, that day is great. Let's get that. It says, Alas, that day is great. The day of the Lord is at hand. Salak, let me highlight that. For the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Right, so you think when the Lord comes, he's coming to send peace? No, when the Lord comes, Yahweh shall come, he's coming to destroy, deconstruct shit, break down all type of governments. He's going to be wearing many crowns, which indicates rulership, dominion, power. You see? And when you go back to the book of 2 Peter 3, 2 Peter 3 and 11, it says, Seeing then that all these things, all these things that we just spoke about, all these precepts we just, we just brought out in regards to this place being destroyed, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What kind of person are you to be in behavior, man? Are you supposed to be in a house of mirth? Or are you supposed to be in a house of mourning? Or waiting for your power? If you're a so-called Negro, Latino, or Native American, for your power to come back and bring salvation and to also bring destruction to the place of your oppression. Yeah, how about Shemiah is not, he's not going to be fucking around, man. So it would behoove you, while you still have the liberty, while you still have the opportunity, the chance, it would behoove you, okay, to take heed to these words that are being spoken to you. Repent, turn back to your Yahweh now. turn back to your power, because you've been, you've been taught wrong for so long. Christianity teaches you about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, and that brings about a whole different vibration than the, the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that's written in the book of Revelations. When you, when you get to read that, you get to see that he's not a so-called white man. He is an angry so-called Negro. That's how you would identify him today. Or a so-called black man. Good. So seeing that all these things are about to be dissolved, what manner of persons are you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? Looking forward and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, wherein what the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Woo! And what's going to bring that once again is the thermonuclear missiles. Nevertheless, we, we, according to His promise, look for what a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So while the smoke is arising from this place, the earth is going to rock to and fro like a drunkard. Landmarks. Oceans are going to evaporate. New land is going to be created. This is going to be a whole new earth, man. Refreshed, renewed, kinos. So if you're going through whatever you're going through, man, look, whatever you're going through, that glory cannot compare. That that suffering cannot compare to the glory that we're about to receive. Let's see. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, this is Romans 8 and 18. Okay. It says, well, let's go. Let's start at 16. It says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high Yahweh. And if children, then heirs. Right? Because what is the nation of Israel called? Yasha Arla. He prints power. We are the sons. And if you are a son of someone, then when that's someone... Usually here in, in, on earth, when that person passes away, you would inherit what they have. But our power is a living power. He doesn't have to die in order for us to receive what he has for us. Right? He says, if children, then heirs of the Most High. And if joint heirs, and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. We are, we're waiting 
for our own manifestation. The world is waiting for our manifestation. So we thank Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, for the mercy that He's given to us, the liberty, the time, in order for us to repent and turn back to Him and to seek Him ten times more, man. Knowing that we could have been a part of these people who are blind, man, who have not received this truth. When the truth was presented, they turned away from it. The water Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. So, hey, look. We need to be in the house of mourning. We need to fear, but at the same time, be exceedingly glad because we have the opportunity to solidify our, our, our position on those chariots, our, our, our seats on those chariots. We have the opportunity now to please the Heavenly Father with our works. So with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Racha HaKodash. And I say, Wa Ababa Baal Shalom.